welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe most people know me as the reptiles here on YouTube and on Instagram and for those of you that are new I am a former AZA zoo educator with a degree in animal behavior ecology and conservation and a minor in zoo biology I've done many internships with zookeeping and life support in zoos and aquariums and today I want to talk to you guys about why you should consider a career as a zoo educator I've done a lot of videos about zookeeping, how to become a zookeeper, what classes I took in college to become a zookeeper, I've talked about my internship experiences to become a zookeeper. Obviously, I didn't become a zookeeper, I became a zoo educator, and then I left the zoo field to move to the nature center field. <laughs> so, however, because I did work as a zoo educator, I did want to talk to you guys about that because I haven't really talked to you guys much about that on here um, and there were a lot of pros to it so uh, for some people it might be a really good job opportunity that a lot of people don't think about um, when they think about jobs working with animals so joining me today is Penelope just because I know a lot of people prefer that I hold animals in videos even if it's not about that animal people for some reason just like it when we have animals as opposed to just sit and talk to you. So I've got Penelope my hog nose out today. So most people, when they think about working in a zoo, the first thing that comes to mind is zookeeping. Now one of the other jobs, obviously, is being a zoo educator. So the pros to being a zoo educator over a zookeeper. Most of the time, in like 99% of zoos, the educators are also the keepers of the education animals. So, in any other zoo, I could have still called myself a zookeeper because typically the educators are the keepers for the education animals. For some reason at the zoo that I worked for, they took animal care away from the educators and gave it strictly to the keepers and made the educators just educators shortly before I got there. Um, no one really knows why they did that, but the educators were no longer keepers. So, for someone like me, that really sucked because I was low on the totem pole. I didn't have emails to answer, phone calls to make, things to schedule. If there were no programs that day, I pretty much sat around twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> so it would have been really nice to be a keeper for the education animals um, so that when there was no programs, I could be down there doing things with the animals. And I would socialize the animals and hang out with the animals, enrich the animals. Um, when there was no programs and I had nothing else to do, but it would have been nice if we could have still been the keepers because that's how they do it at most zoos. So most zoos, you will still be considered a zookeeper even if you're an educator. It's just not how they did it at my zoo, which was kind of frustrating, but you know, it's a thing of the past. So that's the first pro. Typically, you'll still be considered a zookeeper even if you're an educator. The next pro is that you get to be hands-on with the animals. Most keeping positions, especially in an AZA facility, have strict hands-off guidelines. You know, you're not supposed to go in and interact with most of the animals if there's any sort of danger that can come with them. So one of the places I interned at, um, one of the animals I interned with was river otters. Um, they were very, very strict on the fact that you were not going in with river otters. Nobody was to touch the river otters because should they decide to bite, they can do some serious damage. Um, so there's a lot of places where they'll, t like if you're going in to clean an exhibit, you pull the animals behind the scenes before going out into the exhibit and then you have to make sure you leave the exhibit and everything is locked before they let the animals back on exhibit. Um, so most of the time, keepers, they don't get to be hands-on with the animals. But as an educator, you're full hands-on with the animals. You can't present an animal if you can't be hands-on with it. Like, that makes it very difficult. So, it's a lot of fun because you get to handle all of these animals. Like, I got to work with a porcupine. I got to snuggle a freaking porcupine. Um, I got to snuggle an opossum, hang out with a huge snapping turtle, handle all these snakes and lizards. I got to work with raptors, which was one of my dreams to be able to work with raptors. Um, so, you know, like falcons and whatnot, owls. So that was probably the hardest part of leaving my job at the zoo was that I finally was getting to work with raptors and then I left. <laughs> um, so that's a pro is that you get to be very hands-on with animals where a lot of keeping positions you might not be, depending on what animals you work with. Okay, next pro, and this is one that I actually didn't think about until my boss at the zoo pointed it out. 
and it's that the educators are the superstars of the zoo. You're the ones that are in front of the public, teaching them, talking to them about the zoo, giving the tours. So you're the ones that they get to meet and talk to, um, unless they're doing like keeper chats on grounds where the zookeepers come out and talk about the animals and their care and whatnot. Most of the times it's the educators that are doing the programs, the zoo mobiles, the birthday parties, the field trips. So you're the ones that people are associating with the zoo. So that was really cool for me because um, for the summer I was the head camp counselor. Um, so then for the school year when I did zoo mobiles, if I went to a school where one of my campers was, they recognized me. So they'd be walking into like the gym or the classroom, wherever I was doing a presentation, and they'd be like, oh, hi, Miss Zoe. And so that was just super cool. It's like you're kind of the celebrities of the zoo because you're the ones that the public sees. The next pro, and this is one that I actually really appreciated. I never thought about it until it happened and I really appreciated it. And that's that with a educator job, you get to leave the zoo. You're not stuck at work all day. If you have a zoomobile, an off-ground birthday party, a booth where you're gonna go set up, you get to leave work for the day and just go hang out with animals, educate someone somewhere new. You get to go set up a table somewhere or stand in front of a room of random people and just talk about the animals you get to work with and teach them about them. So it was just super nice that you know I got to leave grounds. I wasn't stuck there for eight hours a day. I got to hop in the Zoomobile and get out of there for a couple hours and it was so nice. It was so nice just to get out of there just for a couple hours even though I was still working. You know I was driving. I hate driving but you know I had a couple times where I had to drive like an hour or two to get to a location and so it was just it was nice to get away from work for a while. Even though I was still working I got to leave the physical location of my work. <laughs> so that was that was super nice sometimes just to get away. Um, next pro, I'm just kind of pulling these off the top of my head. I started filming this video with two pros in mind and figured I would just come up with the rest as I was filming. So I, I, this might be the last pro if I don't come up with another one. Um, but next pro is that you're the one that gets to change people's lives. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've done presentations and there's been people who are terrified of snakes. And by the end, I've got them convinced that they're going to touch the snake, they're going to do it, or they're no longer scared of snakes. I think the highlight of my career at the zoo was doing programs for an elementary school. Um, I just did like three classes. I think it was like maybe a couple kindergarten and then like a first grade or something. Um, so very, very young kids. And I remember one kid sat down and asked me about a snake and I told him yes I brought the rainbow boa and he or maybe it was a ball python I think I had our ball python and he like scooched way back he was like uh-uh no no I'm scared of snakes I don't want that thing near me yada yada so I was like okay well you know what she's she's really nice she doesn't move very quickly and I'll be holding her so you're perfectly safe right there you know she won't be able to get you she's not gonna try so you just sit right there and you'll be totally okay so I presented her, I walked around, let all the kids touch her, and this kid, once he saw all his friends touch her, he wasn't going to be the one person that didn't. So he was really brave, he decided he was going to touch her, and at the very end, I asked them which animal I brought was their favorite, and this kid said the snake was his favorite. So that was probably like the highlight of my time at the zoo, Oops. <laughs> was changing that one boy's mindset on snakes. And now you're going to do that for everyone. Some people have really good reasons to be afraid of what they're afraid of. Um, but I think he just, he hadn't really been exposed to snakes um, in a controlled environment. Uh, maybe he saw one slithering really quickly outside and it was a little scary. His parents probably freaked out so he thought he should freak out. Um, he hadn't had the opportunity to meet a nice calm snake that he could just touch and learn about and it had a name. So seeing a wild snake slithering really quick in front of you, people screaming, that's a little startling. Having someone there holding the snake, telling you its name is Lizzie, it's really nice, that kind of, that changes your perception a little bit. Um, there's a lot of nursing homes I went to where people were really, again, the snakes usually, burning the lizards, the reptiles typically, they were a little freaked out about, um, and I would convince little people to touch the snakes and they loved them. <laughs> so
So not only are you helping people um, kind of get a better understanding of their fear, where it comes from and how to get over it, and helping them get over it, um, you're also educating. So you're spreading the message about conservation. Um, you're helping educate. So one of my favorite animals to bring on programs was our possum because they're very misunderstood. And everyone that met our possum ended up loving her by the end. So it's super cool to get to see the changes in people's mindsets from the animals you bring and from the information that you're teaching them. So being a zoo educator has a lot of perks. Now obviously for me, like it taught me that I really do love education. It's something I want to pursue, which is why I'm in the process of trying to start my own reptile education business in the future. You know, I've got the animals, I've got a pretty good collection going for ambassadors. Um, I just the money, getting it started up, um, so it will happen eventually. <laughs> but it taught me that I really do love education and reptile education. Um, but unfortunately there was no keeping aspect to it, which I still really wanted. Um, and I didn't like being low man on the totem pole. <laughs> I like being in charge of myself and having things done my way, the way I want them done. So with my animals, you know, it's me taking care of them. I'm basically my animal's zookeeper. <laughs> things get done the way I want them done. Um, I can still educate. So it was just a good move for me. But for anyone looking to work in a zoo or work with animals, I highly suggest giving education a thought because like I said, there's a lot of pros. And yeah, so if you guys have any questions about being a zoo educator, feel free to leave me a comment. You can shoot me a message on Instagram or on Twitter. Um, and I will try my best to answer any questions, give you guys advice, whatever it is you guys want, um, whatever you guys need. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I've got a lot of projects going on and you don't want to miss them. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!